ब्रह्म गली ब्रह्म स्वरूपनी महापाठकनी नाशनी महामाया माया देवी ब्रह्मा विष्णु धारणी सर्वगंगे माया देवी ब्रह्म गली नमस्ते हम सो दैट कोविटेड एनलाइटनमेंट दैट एवरी वन इज सो ईगर फॉर और द स्टेट ऑफ समाधि इज नथिंग बट सेल्फिशनेस when one person feels good and the rest of the world continues to suffer in ignorance so said an indian ascetic a sadhu about whom i want to tell you here in india all accidents are not accidental and life has brought me together with such an amazing person this was a guru who differs from ordinary hermits in that he traveled around india for many years rode a motorcycle he had totally nothing and he was a real ascetic i was introduced to him by two of our russians who lived with him for several years and traveled around india they sent me videos and photos about him and this ascetic baba is well known for the fact that he loved to travel by motorcycle in a few years he traveled all over india to holy places and also an italian motion film company traveled with him and made a short documentary on him i want to show you a part of this movie i also translated the statements of guru from that movie to make you understand about his life life brought me together with him in a rather unusual way one morning there was a knock on my door when i opened the door and there was a man in orange dress red locks and a beard standing on the threshold but he was a russian i was surprised because i had never seen such a person so close especially at my home taken aback i asked would you like some tea i received the answer yeah or maybe there are also some buns then i realized this is absolutely my own person and his level of spirituality was very high since he is so adequate and straight charactered we have been talking with him all day i recorded a 4 hour interview he told how they lived together with this real indian yogis at the kumbh mela festival they lived there in a tent and many miracles and some kind of spiritual revelations happened with them kumbh mela is a major pilgrimage and festival in hinduism it is celebrated in a cycle of approximately 4 years not only the pilgrims throughout india but lots of tourists also from the country and abroad gather to take part in this biggest festival in india they come to the same place and live together for about a month or two and so two of our russian guys got there received their initiations too and found this guru and when he talked about the guru that's exactly how i imagined him as later i saw the videos and photos a clear image formed and when i got this real images of him everything worked out for me i got a very strong inner response i want to collect these materials these indian ascetics are quiet in india there are quite a few of these wandering sadhus they are called sadhus from what they have the sadhana these are such religious actions rituals mantras and they do ritual and actions in temples this is what their life consists of on the way to god in the 8th century the famous shankaracharya structured all sadhu community united them and made several lines out of them and our guru is from the order of giri therefore his full name is Shiva Giri Baik Baba This is such a popular prefix because he rides a motorcycle and he was nicknamed Baik Baba and when Shiva Giri was heading on his way as a hermit he found his teacher and the teacher gave him the first test he told Shiva Giri to travel for 3 years without taking anything with him to live his entire past life and the only condition was not to ask any money from anything 
and the only condition was not to ask anyone for anything and shivagiri baba agreed to this he passed this test with dignity as it turned out later this was such a very wise decision from his teacher this was true yoga because this is precisely the straight practice of opening the heart because if you are close to people and in distrust in fear of the world the world will also respond to you it will mirror you and here this practice is to love people to be open to them and so he spent those 3 years and never needed anything he was invited everywhere and people invited him into the house to spend the night people treated him fed him gave him water gave him a place to stay for the night and added free gasoline to his motorcycle at gas station and thus he traveled honestly for 3 years he returned again to his guru and said that he had completed this task so guru took shivagiri as his disciple after initiations he became a naga baba ascetics shave their heads and have some other ritual so they seem to die for the social world for a past life and are reborn again so i think that's enough for my intro i wish you a pleasant viewing i hope you will get the same ascetic and spiritual pleasure that i got when i first came into contact with this I was born on the 17th of May 1940 at Hyderabad and until I was 17 18 I was in business then without my parents approval I went to Bombay and there I was still involved in business in Bombay my way of thinking changed business no longer interested me in 1960 I became a holy man a baba what do you do after you become a baba Fulfillment comes with traveling. If you stay where you are, you are like a lion. By traveling everywhere, you will find fulfillment. By staying in one place, you will instead be like a lion that uses his strength only for himself. If you do everything, if you see the whole of India, your task in life will be well and truly fulfilled, and then you can stop. A holy man doesn't have a current account in the bank, doesn't have traveler's checks, nor land, nor work. His job is merely to meditate. There is a stone. If you trust in it, you will receive gifts. Otherwise, you will receive nothing. I had faith in my motorbike and believed I could ride it a long time. I have the strength of my devotion, and it's thanks to this faith that I have traveled for 164,000 kilometers and not had a single problem. My name is Naga Baba Shiva Didi. In some places they call me Nepali Naga Baba. In others they call me Bike Baba and Hero Honda Swami. I even get called Tremendous Baba. All these names are because of the things I do. What is an ascetic? An ascetic is born into a family, abandons it, and is reborn. He no longer has sexual desires. He starts to practice meditation, and people go to him and ask him for a blessing and pray. This is how we live. This is the life a sadhu leads. We must live in peace, reciting prayers, and we must give joy to everybody. That's our task. If there is a sadhu who lives only by sitting at the market asking for money, he is not a real sadhu, but a false one. He who is true never asks. He who is false always asks. A sadhu has no desires. He eats no tasty foods. If he gets something good to eat, okay. If not, it doesn't matter. If I find nothing to eat, I meditate. We holy men ask nothing of anyone. Our life is not made to ask. Sometimes when I can, I stop. I park near a village. I look for a place where there is water and wood for cooking. I pitch my little tent. I rest. I cook a little rice and sleep. 
You can sometimes order that. Sometimes I sleep in a hotel or in a temple or in the street or in the forest anywhere. Sometimes they tell me to stay in a hotel. Come on, come on in and sleep. But I don't like staying in hotels very much. When people see a barber, they say, Come here, come to me. If you, Baba, come to my house, I will be lucky. When I get to his house, he cooks me a vegetarian meal and lets me sleep comfortably. Our life is made to give. We got more to cook. At first I smoked a lot. No, much less, much less. I did 100 kilometers and smoked. I smoked a lot. Now I am just a boy of 59. 5 plus 9 makes 14. I am 14 years old. I am a young boy. In my mouth I have no teeth, in my stomach I have no pain. When we smoke a ganja, our minds focus on a point, and during the meditation we unite with God. Our gaze meets God. It is drawn to God. Our mind is drawn and under control, as if attracted by a magnet. Dreams are without form, so we meditate with devotion. We become sadhus, so we may meditate. Seek no one, ask no one, speak to no one. It's a dream within a dream. Today we're here, tomorrow no longer. This is why we recite the name of God. This is what's useful for us. Everything else is useless. The buildings I own and my hundred million rupees in the bank will be useless. We've come with closed hands and we'll go with open hands. Think and you will understand the world. There is no guarantee of life, not even for a second, but instead we have amassed things for a hundred years. Inviting. I bought a motorbike in 1992 and I've traveled 164,000 kilometers. I'd like to travel for 12 years in all and I will meditate so that everything may go well. Then I'll stop somewhere. I cannot buy a piece of land in southern India because it is very expensive. The great master Shankaracharya too has said that a cycle lasts 12 years. And so I have completed a 12-year cycle of meditation and I have organized free meals for 12 years. I want to travel 12 years by motorbike if God grants me it. Otherwise, we will see. Everything that God wishes, I will do. If there is a place for me to stop, I will stop then. If someone gives me a new motorbike, I will accept it. If someone gives me a car, I will travel in that car. I'll drive either car or truck. I'd like to drive all types of vehicles. The Kaliuga, the cosmic era of decadence, has transformed the minds of people into a swing. The mind swings here, then there, incapable of concentrating. God wants three things, the soul, the word, and the eyes. With these three things you can reach God. But the eyes look elsewhere, the mind goes off on its own track, and the mouth says other things. What sort of spirituality is that? Here there's a mango tree that's 3,500 years old, and it was very strong. The mango tree once had seven or eight large branches, and even if there was a cyclone, it didn't break, because faith gave strength, and the wind did not have the power. Now faith has diminished, so when the wind blows, the branches break. What's gone wrong? The old tree was sacred, and was capable of fulfilling every wish. Those with two feet are men, those with four are animals, those with six are flies, those with eight are ants, and those with ten are spiders. Today, man has fallen into the spider's web. Today, in the Kaliuga, man is too taken up with the illusion of attachment to material things. When we become a sannyasi, we coat ourselves with ash and vow not to wear clothes, not to lie, and not to perform unjust actions for 12 years. After we have promised to do these three things, we can become a sadhu. We cover ourselves with ash because we must meditate for 12 years and then we sit in a place in front of the holy fire and speak to no one. The duty of a sadhu is to cover himself with ash. Ash has a power that clothes do not. Clothes cover everything, but ash uncovers. Shiva too coats himself with ash, and he is the lord of three worlds. He too sits at the cemetery and spreads ash all over himself. That's why it's our duty to cover ourselves with ash. In 1959, I went to the feast of Kumbha Mela in the town of Haridwar. There was a sadhu called Danapati Lakshman Giri Maharaj. All the sadhus told me I could become their disciple. I listened to them and thought about their offers. But Danapati Lakshman Giri Maharaj for 12 days didn't say a thing to me. Then one day he asked, 
asked me if I wanted to become his disciple, I said I did. But he refused because he said that all his disciples had to be honest and strong. Any disciple of mine, he said, must know how to control his body, mind and tongue. Only then can he become a sadhu. He told me to develop these three faculties and if I succeeded, then he would decide what to do. I said I would do it if he would have me as his disciple. He told me to travel three years and not to expect a single gift, not to eat in anybody's house, not beg. I told him I was ready to face and pass these tests. I spent three years living like that. Then I returned to Kumbha Mela. The master asked me what I had done. I said I had neither desired nor asked anything of anyone and that I'd organized free meals for all. He said that was fine and on the same day he had me become a Naga Sadhu, a naked ascetic. Naga Baba. I became a naked Baba and a Naga Baba has a mantra. If someone recites it in reverse, they acquire dark and impure qualities. If it is said correctly, you acquire bright and pure quality. The master gave me this mantra and asked me what use I would make of it. I said I would use it following the path of truth. He asked me if I was sure of my choice. I told him I was. After three years, my master gave me two rupees. With those two rupees, I got to Kathmandu spending 50 cents. I had a rupee and 50 cents left. I travel by motorbike because once you could go on foot easily in India, now it's impossible. The roads are very long. Once there was the forest everywhere, you could walk. Now there are so many cities. There's no peace in the cities. They are always asking me to read their palms, telling me they have problems. Instead, with the motorbike, I can stop after 50 or 100 kilometers, and after I've spoken for two or three minutes, I can set off again. On foot, you meet people every 10 minutes. On the motorbike, you never meet anybody. I always stop far from people and work from afar. Now my motorbike is old and it gets overheated, so I do 30, 40 kilometers, then I stop at a small restaurant. I drink tea, then I set off once more, stop, have tea, off I go again. A tea, a bit of bread, at times I sleep, sometimes I rest. There is a devotee who said that he would give me 12 luminous lingams and 4,000 square meters of land if I stayed with him for two years. But I cannot stay in one place because I have a worm in my ear. I'm a wandering holy man and I'm like running water. I wish to travel because for 32 years I stayed in my ashram in Kathmandu and had no desires. Now I want to travel. I want to travel as an itinerant ascetic. A sadhu is like water. The water that anyone can touch, any caste, be it priest, warrior, businessman or untouchable. Anyone can drink water. Water we call pani. A priest drinks water. A soldier drinks water. An untouchable drinks water. A businessman drinks water. Water is for everybody. The master of the world, Shankaracharya, just drank water and ate no rice. I give my blessings without worrying about what caste people belong to. In my opinion, there are only two castes. One is man and the other is woman, only two. It's the mother that tells the child what caste they belong to and who is their father. Otherwise, a child might never know. A Naga Baba has no caste, he's only a sannyasi. Everyone is the same, everyone's the same. Religion is all that matters to him. I am not great, it's my karma that's great. My parents have contributed to my birth, but they have no part in my karma. The store of knowledge from my previous life I have received in this, and that of this life I will receive in the next. Yesterday, today, tomorrow, they are three moments, and there is a relation between the three lives. I can meditate for four months after receiving a small gift. God will think of tomorrow for me, because if he has given me teeth, then he will also give me food, if not in the morning, in the evening for sure. I mean, as who is the immortal one? It is Shiva who lives in the jungle covered with dust. He never worries about speaking or eating. He only meditates. Rama offered Shiva his meditation and Shiva offered his to Rama. You need two hands to clap, not just one. The master of the world is a Brahmin. The master of a Brahmin is a Sanyasi and the master of the Sanyasi is the immortal one. 
Who is the immortal one? It is Shiva. Shiva lives in the jungle and sits in the cemeteries and in the snow. And that's what we sannyasi do too. Every year I ride my motorbike 20, 25,000 kilometers and then I have a three month rest as I have always done. I still haven't had a rest this year, but I want one. It'll rain for two or three months, so I'll have to stop because the roads get waterlogged and because the cold could make me ill. I could catch cold.